All right, good morning. good morning. Well, we have a very interesting class today, our lesson, because we're going to be going at this route that we've got to chop out of our life all the days of our life. And that's that haughty spirit where we begin to think too highly of ourselves. And so um, I'm glad you're here. And uh, we're going to have a good morning. Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We thank you, sir, that you help us. We can't make it without you. And we ask you by the power of the Holy Spirit to show us areas in our life where we have missed it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Isaiah 2, in verse 11, says this. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled. Mm. The haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Amen. So isn't that a good word? Yes. We just say the Lord alone is the only one that's to be on high. And so what we have to choose is that we will be like the Lord. And I looked up that word haughtiness in the Hebrew language, and it means to rise up, to raise in various application of exalting yourself. Mm. And when we exalt ourselves, we um, heave upward, we set up on high, we become presumptuously proud, and it's interesting, this word means to breed worms. Ooh, isn't that something? Now, you can stop and think, and you should immediately go to the New Testament about a person that exalted himself and the worms took over in him. And uh, if you don't know about that, I would encourage you to find out because that pride is so dangerous to us. And the more we do things the right way, or we have some sense of, well, I finally got this done. And we begin to feel good about ourselves. Before we realize it, we have blown it and we've exalted ourselves. And then we're in a place where we could breed worms. Yuck. <laughs> so I want it to be so repulsive to us that we, we just constantly have to check ourselves up and say, what's going on in my life today? You see, pride is like a weed. It grows without any help. And isn't that the truth? <laughs> we just get so full of ourself and it, and it just grows and multiplies and we don't even realize it. And the sad thing is that none has more pride than the one who thinks he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I guess because I read the Amplified Bible for so many years, that was my normal scripture passages that I would read every day. And you know, it talks about that spirit that causes you to overestimate yourself and underestimate others. We've got to flip it. Because if we want to get that root of pride or haughtiness, that lofty look out of us, we have to overestimate others and underestimate ourselves. And, and it's a lifetime of just constantly going over this. And I heard a friend say one time that pride is the basis for every relationship problems we have. Because you have to be willing to say, I'm sorry. I need you. I love you. And if you can't do that, why? Why can't we do that? Why can't we? Because of pride, we're thinking, well, I didn't do anything wrong. And they should be telling me. You know, somewhere we have to underestimate ourselves and overestimate others and do everything we can to have a strong relationship. And it's, it's a fight. It is a fight. And I, I always um, am shocked at how hard some people fight. Just, just making things the right way. And so we want to not ever have a coldness in our heart towards another pe person because the root cause might be pride. It might be pride in us. And it will remove the gifts of God in a person where they're not received anymore. 
You know, um, God gives his gifts and he never takes them back. But to be fruitful, you have to be willing to humble yourself and say, you know what, I was wrong. I messed up. I said something I shouldn't have. I did something I shouldn't have. And I ask you to forgive me. And you want to get restoration there. And I believe that God manifests himself in our lives when we are completely honest. And we're open. And we allow God to deal with us as we are. And so I want us to look at some of the attributes of this evil root of a haughty spirit or the action of pride. The first thing is that you become very vain. Now I said that, as today I have on my pretty new shirt with my, with my bracelets and my... And it always tickles me when someone says, that sure is a pretty shirt. Oh, you look good in that shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, mm -hmm. and finally I couldn't keep it back anymore. And I said, you know where I got this? <laughs> I didn't go to the mall. I went to the mall of Cleveland called Operation Refuge Thrift Shop. Hallelujah. Because we have new clothes come in with the tags still on. And I always look, oh, that looks good. Let me see what size that is. Oh, $2. I can afford this. Are you following me? You see, never think that you have to have a name brand and you have to spend big bucks. You can make do with whatever God has given you. But you know, a person that's haughty, they wouldn't dare shop at the thrift shop. They wouldn't dare confess they got that at a garage sale. They wouldn't dare. Why? Because they want to feel important, see? And that's where the vanity will come in. And it causes us to have an egotistical attitude about ourselves, holier than thou. We look down on others instead of saying, God, you are so gracious to me. I'm so thankful. Now, I found this quote. An egotist is one who thinks if he hadn't been born, people would wonder why. <laughs> Isn't that the way we go? Now, there are geographical areas where pride is so entrenched in the people because they think well, we are the founding family. We are the ones that pioneered this geographical area. So we are important. And, you know, when you get into that mindset, you're in, in trouble. Moab was a place that was filled with people filled with pride. And let me tell you something. The children of Moab didn't have a good ending. I never will forget the first time I was in Israel and I finally saw the mountains of Moab and I went, is that all it is? Is, is this really what the children of Israel were always wanting to go to the mountains of Is this really all there is to it? You know, that's what happens to pride. You just get to thinking, oh, I've really got myself doing good. We have to guard against it, saints. We have to just say, no, I'm not going to have any part of it. The second thing about having a haughty spirit is that it causes a person to be very boastful. They like to brag and they are very arrogant. And when it is growing in somebody, all they can think about is their ideas, their projects, and how big and glorious it's going to be. And when we have, <laughs> you see somebody that has nothing to boast about, but they just go on and on and on about their little, you're thinking, oh dear, oh dear, what's going on here? We have to guard against that. And you know, when um, th this other quote I found said this, when a man is wrapped up in himself, he makes a pretty small package. And, and it's the truth, you know, we, we think we're really doing good until we see someone else and we think, oh dear. So the third thing is that when pride is working in us and that root has not been chopped out, that's why John the Baptist, I mean, that, the way the scripture describes that, that John the Baptist said, you've got to take the ax to the root of the problem. Uh, you have to get real brutal with yourself. Because the third thing is that you become very controlling, domineering, dictatorial, stubborn, and obstinate. Ooh. 
And I don't do well with people that are, are control freaks. If you try to control me, I will probably buck and snort really fast <laughs> because we should only strive to have the Holy Spirit in control of our life. We don't need man controlling every area of our life. We need to be so sensitive to the Lord that when He tells us to do something, we just say, yes, sir. I'm so happy to do this. And as a result, you begin to come under the control of the Holy Spirit. And the best way to stop that domineering attitude is to serve. Because when you serve others, you're not controlling them anymore. You're looking for a way that you can serve them with the goodness of God. And instead of expecting others to do things for you, why don't you do something for someone else? And when we do that, it becomes a lifestyle. And you, you joyfully serve someone else. You joyfully look for ways where you can be a servant to them. But you have to submit, first of all, to the Lord and to His Word. And to let the Holy Spirit show you exactly what needs to be done. Otherwise, our neck becomes hardened. I love the way the scripture says our neck becomes hard. That means we're just pickled. You know, we're, we're so stiff and hardened that that superior attitude opposite just comes right into us. Um, it says big shots are usually small shots who kept on shooting. Paige was telling me that to, for the, in basketball, you have to um, shoot how many times? How many, what's your reps that you do? 10,000? 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. So you see these uh, people that are really good shooting the basketball. Then the, the baseline is you have spent 10,000 hours perfecting a lot of people don't want to do that. But you know what? At the end of our day, the thing that you do over and over again causes you to be very good at that. And that's what we want. We want the Spirit of God to so move on the inside of us that we're putting in our 10,000 reps, 10,000 hours to be godly. 10,000 hours of reading your Bible. 10,000 hours of talking to the Lord. 10,000 hours serving over a lifetime others. I'm telling you, it, it's revolutionizing. You know, we've referred to Mother Teresa before, and she's probably the best example of anyone I know because she consistently humbled herself and served the poorest of the poor in India. And at the end of her days, any place she went, crowds followed. Why? Because she had put in that time when nobody was watching, nobody was taking notes, nobody was saying, oh, good job today. She just was faithful. And you know, that's something you'll hear me say over and over again, to be found faithful. You know, there's a lot of people that come and go. In church world, people come, people leave. I love the way the late... Pastor John Osteen said it. He said, just keep driving the bus. <laughs> said, sometimes people get on the bus. Sometimes people get off the bus. Said, don't worry about who gets on and who gets off the bus. You just keep driving the bus. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, that's where I want to be. I want to be found faithful doing what God's called me to do. And I know you do too, or you wouldn't be here today. And we are going to refuse to allow that root of being dictatorial and controlling and obstinate and stubborn. Where, you know, we're going to do it my way or we're not going to do it. Oh, hello. Maybe God has a better way for us. Okay. The fourth thing is that this root of haughtiness or pride will cause us to be very scornful and we will mock people. Mm. So sad. Because a scorner is someone who looks at another person with contempt, ridicule, and maybe even hatred. Very sad. The scorner's disposition is always foul. Now, I'll share with you a time Fern was with me. We were in Ghana, which is in West Africa. 
and I was asked to speak at an Assembly of God ladies conference. And uh, it was delightful. Several hundred ladies were there. I don't remember how many. Fern, do you remember? No. Well, at any rate, when they began to dance, I couldn't help myself. I just got down there, and I was just dancing and having the best time. And when they would bring their offering down, and they have nothing, but they have such a glad heart, and they are so happy to give. And I looked up, and there were some missionaries sitting on the platform. Now, I was the main speaker, but they were there, white missionaries. And the look that they had towards me wasn't fun. What happened? They were scorning my actions. Here I was, a white woman from the United States, fully and, and I have pictures. I could bring one and show you. Somebody, I guess it was fun made that picture. I don't know. I was the only little white face out there. I was having the time of my life. I was like, Jesus, this is glorious. But there was others that scorned. When King David took off his overcoat, threw his jacket to the side, and went dancing down the streets of Jerusalem, his wife looked out the window and held him in scorn. And her words were so cutting. Oh, was it? Weren't you something today? You see, in her pea brain, he was not acting like the king that her father was. And yet, David was acting like the king that God called him to be. And it has nothing to do with us. It has to do with the heart of God being on the inside of us. Now let me give you a little P.S. to my little story of being in Kamasi, Ghana. When I gave the invitation for the ladies to be, to get right with the Lord and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it was an overwhelming response. And afterwards, one of the white missionaries not the one that scorned, but another one said, we have never seen them respond like this before. And you know what I believe it was? Because we identified with them. We embraced them. I, I fully believe that until they know how much we care and we are willing to serve them on whatever level, they'll never respond to the gospel. And I think, how many years have you devoted as a missionary, but you have no fruit? And so we have to guard ourselves that we never allow ourselves to think of ourselves more than what God has called us to be. And the moment we become scornful and mocking, we are on dangerous ground because God has a hard time using us when we have that attitude. The fifth thing we see is that this pride will cause us to have a lot of contention and wrath because everywhere you go, there will be disagreements, there will be contention, there will be all kinds of situations where people just, they push back against that. They, I don't think I want anything to do with that. You see, the pride causes us to, mm, can't deal with that because that's contrary to the ways of God. And when pride is growing in us, the end result is contention. There's quarreling, laying waste, and there will ultimately be ruin. Jeremiah said, Moab will no longer be a nation, for it has boasted against the Lord. So it doesn't matter how old your family has lived, how many generations, whatever. Don't boast about that. Because you know what? We have no, no idea of the days that we have. Only God has our days. And we should be found faithful doing what God's called us to do and not be concerned about our history. So in this particular instance, in Moab, there was a great contention that went on the quarreling. And it says there was pride and wrath or rage and anger. Uh, a strong passion 
of anger and rage. The sixth thing we see about pride is it causes insolent behavior. And that's where we have disrespect to those around us and boldness. And unfortunately, that is our world today. Our young people have no respect for anyone, for, for those older, for anybody, for anybody. It's just, and they said, are you disrespecting me? And I'm going, no, you disrespected your own self. You see, we have to, we have to teach this to our children and our grandchildren. You see, a lack of respect um, comes sometimes when you're just a busybody. Always getting in somebody else's business and you think, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so what do we do? We say, I'm not going to get into somebody's business unless they give me permission. If they come to me and they say something, then they've opened the door and I will certainly walk through. But otherwise, I haven't got time for that. I've got plenty on my plate to try and get in somebody else's life and tell them how to do and what they did wrong and, and look down my little skinny nose or fat nose at them. We, we just don't do that. That's insolent behavior. And when you do that, there's a problem that needs to be addressed and you probably need to go to celebrate recovery. Hallelujah. Let's get, let's get this issue handled. <laughs> Because otherwise, people just run from you. They think, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. And so, um, if somebody doesn't ask for our advice, well, praise the Lord. Maybe one day they'll, they'll grow up and say, you know what, I need help. Do you know what I need to do? Now that you ask. I'll give you my, my thoughts on this. Now then, the seventh thing is that pride causes a person that's a Christian to be self-righteous and has an exalted feeling about themselves. The Bible calls this being high-minded. It means to be drunk with pride. Wow. To be drunk with pride. Oh. A heart that is lifted up not only against man, but also against God. I think this is what's happened um, in Washington, D.C., when years ago, Pastor John Jimenez and his wife Ann had something they called Mar uh, Washington for Jesus. And in 1980 was the first one. And through a circumstances, I, Verna Tompkins was at a conference that I was at, and um, old timers would know who she is. If you don't know, she was a, she's a mighty woman of God, still alive today. And she asked me to be the coordinator for the women for the state of Arkansas. Probably because she didn't know anybody else in Arkansas. But at any rate, I said, I'll do what I can. And so then I came home and I went around and I encouraged churches to take people. And Bob and I went and we, um, there, when we got there, we walked up out of the, the underground onto the mall, and there was thousands upon thousands of people there praying. This was 1980. See, God's had people pray for our nation for years and years and years. And after it was over with, we did, we went to the Smithsonian, and then we went by the Capitol, and one of the policemen was standing there, and there was all kinds of men I uh, didn't see any women, but I saw men just screaming and acting a fool. And, and I said to the policeman, I said, does this happen often? He said, oh, every day. He said, the problem with this area is people come up here and they get drunk on pride. That's the first time I had realized that. He said, power corrupts them. Now, here's a Capitol policeman, and, and you know, we pray for that family because there was a Capitol policeman that was just murdered the other day. A car ran down two of them and killed one of them. But here was a Capitol policeman. That was his job to guard the Capitol, and that's what he told me. Bob couldn't believe I had gotten into this big conversation with this man, but it, it just intrigued me how people would be so brazen and so ugly about yang 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 yang. What good are you doing except showing yourself to be a fool? But that policeman talked about how we get corrupted with pride. 
We're drunk on our sense of it, of importance. It's an exalted feeling that just comes over people where I'm the only one that knows what's going on. Really? Really? I don't think so. I don't think so. So what we have to do is daily, we have to, to discipline our thought. We have to cast down every vain, foolish imagination and ask God to help us to think of ourselves as we ought to. And if we refuse to be accountable to another person, it opens up the door for deception in our areas of thinking. That's why becoming a member of a local church is so vital. Because you have protection, you're, you're hearing a daily um, or weekly balanced word. Uh, I know Paige and Preston are endeavoring to bring in many different people that bless us and encourage us. But we have to be humble-minded enough to receive it. Right. Yes. Amen. We have to come to the place that we say, Lord, I needed that. Yeah. I needed this. Instead of saying, well, bless God, I know it all. No, you don't. Nobody knows it all but Jesus. And unfortunately, we have to get beyond that. Exalted feelings. The eighth thing is that pride will cause you to persecute the needy and the poor. Because you look down upon them on their status in life. And that seems, um, many times, it's a lack of compassion on those who are financially unable to make needs met. And their poverty could be all sorts of things. Illness, tragedy, uh, sometimes it's multiplied troubles. I mean, you get over one crisis and there's three more knocking at the door. And that can rob your finances. And so we have to have compassion for people that we can minister to them. I remember several years ago, I had nobody at the food pantry, so I was interviewing, and then I would run around and get their groceries, and so I saw this lady come in, and when she came in, I knew who she was. Um, she was not really a blood kin to my husband, but she was in the family, and she came in pulling an oxygen tank, barely able to walk, and so when it came her turn to come and sit down, I reached over and put my hand on her, and I said, uh, do you know who I am? And she said, no. And I said, I'm Bob White's wife. And at that point, she burst into tears. And she said, you're Frida. And I said, I am. And I said, how can I help you? And she said, I, I'm so embarrassed. Said, I used to be the one that helped people with food. And now, I have been sick so long, I can't work anymore. And I don't, I had to spend all of my money on medicine. And I said, let me tell you something. It's okay. And we're going to pray. And I just said, give me your hand. Let's pray. And we did. And I said, you're going to get some groceries today. You're going to make it. And I said, you don't have to be embarrassed. All of us, I don't care who you are, have things happen. And she said, well, when I realized who you were, I knew what you'd think about me. And I said, well, you thought wrong because I'm here to help you. And we're here to be a blessing to you. Are you following me? See, we don't know where somebody has walked or what they have gone through. So we don't ever want to be the one that persecutes the needy or the poor. As a matter of fact, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord and He always pays you back. The next thing we see is that pride causes us to have a gossiping tongue and vain conversation. Uh-oh. You know, gossip is like mud thrown against a clean wall. It may not stick, but it always leaves a mark. Wow. Pride causes you to think other people have their problems, are their defects, are their insecurities. And um, I, I also have this little saying, that he who slings mud loses ground. Because you reach down to pick up that handful of mud, you're taken away from your ground. So it's better not to go there. But if you're filled with pride, then you're focused on yourself, and all you can do is put down someone else and talk about them. 
A gossip is a person with a keen sense of rumor. It's easier to float a rumor than to sink one. So we have to choose to be men and women that love God, that are ruthless in chopping out that pride out of us in the name of Jesus. And then we can walk in the blessings of God. Then we can have every good thing that he has intended for us. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We give you praise. We thank you, sir, that you show us what's in us. Father, we're not concerned about anyone else. We just want you to do your work in us, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right.